Welcome to Out of the Box with Kermit Morris, a podcast dedicated to helping believers grow in their spiritual walk. Jesus wants us to look more and more like him every day by getting out of our comfort zones. We hope this podcast will be a blessing to you as you learn to get out of your box and follow Christ. Now here's our host, Kermit Morris. Hello everyone, I'm Kermit Morris and welcome back to another episode of Out of the Box with Kermit Morris. We're glad you're here today. We have a special treat in store for those of you that are listening today. This is with me is Christina Smith and Christina is a member of our church, Impact Community Church, and she is sharing with us today some things that, some experience that that she's been through and will help us in our growth, in our growth with Jesus. So stick around, stay tuned. We're ready to go. Christina, tell us, Let's get started today by you telling us about your salvation experience. Okay, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Um, So originally, uh, I was saved when I was eight years old uh, in, uh, in my childhood. And then I can honestly say when I truly was saved, though, was in my early 30s. Okay, good. Uh, You know, this podcast is about growth. It's a podcast to help Christians grow in their spiritual walk. And so we, I wanted to invite you to come and be a part of it today because you've had some ups and downs in your spiritual walk. And I want you to share a little bit what you'd like to share about those things. And uh, then we'll get into some other things. Yeah, absolutely. So in my 30s, when I said that I really had found my salvation and, and was saved, uh, the biggest thing I would say is going to church for me at that time, I didn't connect. I didn't get connected, and I went every Sunday. Um, I loved going to worship uh, service and listening to the music, but as far as being involved or connected, I did not do that. Um, I didn't do a Bible study. Uh, I didn't network with anyone outside of church, um, but I did attend the, the services, and when I wasn't there, I'd always watch it online. I think the difference now, Kermit, is in my 40s now, and as I've been attending Impact, the difference that I've made is being connected, uh, ensuring that I am uh, partnering with with women um, any day of the week, not just on Sundays, um, and serving and doing Bible studies. What has impacted your growth so far, your spiritual growth? Uh, I know it's early in it, into it, but what has impacted you more than anything in your spiritual growth? I think it's with anything you have to invest time. And I knew what I had done earlier on in my 30s when I was going to church. I, you know, had some opportunities in my life and, you know, some, some things that come about. And I just wasn't prepared for what that looked like. So whenever I was saved... You, you get this warm and fuzzy feeling almost as if, you know, your first relationship, you're in love. And I didn't read the Bible as often as I should. Again, I said I wasn't connected. Uh, but, but this time around, when I think about uh, what I've learned and what I'm doing now is you have to be able to invest time. And it's just like with anything else, um, the more time that you invest in it and the more time that I spend with God and in my prayer walk and in my journey, the more that I learn, the more that I want to learn, the more that I'm equipped. People tell me all the time that, that there's places when, when they get serious about serving God that you begin to go through some trials in your life. Uh, you were in Myrtle Beach and, and you found God and got saved. Uh, what were those trials like that came after that? What yeah. happened? So absolutely. So uh, Kermit, we, uh, my husband and I, we were we were going through a really hard time. We actually separated for an entire year, and instead of going to anyone in the church or reaching out, I instead I kept it inward and I kept it to myself. And the reasons why I did that, um, I believe, is, you know. When you, when you don't know people that you go to church with and you go in there just for the worship service um, or the music, then you don't see, see them and realize that everybody has their own opportunities and they have their own struggles. And so I felt like I was, 
I was different um, and that, you know, maybe I just didn't fit in and my struggles were greater than what they had and uh, maybe I was doing something wrong. So I, instead of reading the Bible, uh, praying, trusting God, I, I turned away. And, um, you know, I, it wasn't that I didn't believe in God. I, 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 I do and I did, but I just didn't serve him. So I think that I was believing that God existed, but I wasn't serving him. How long have you lived in Spartanburg? So I've lived in the upstate for uh, a little over four years. Okay. And when you got saved and you fell in love with Jesus and everything was all milk and honey. Yep. And then you were hit by the fact that y'all were separating and divorcing. Yep. Um, yeah. So sunshine and rainbows, uh, no more. Uh, so I, again... I felt like I had done something wrong. I felt like that I had, I didn't, I wasn't deserving. And I was actually angry with God. I was very angry because I couldn't believe that this would be happening to me and my family. It was a very hard time. Well, some people, a lot of people get angry with God. I have gotten angry with God, but it doesn't do any good. No. <laughs> and so... We have to vent, we have to let him know. He knows and he responds to that. And he comes alongside us once again and says, let me help you. So what happened after that? Well, my daughter, Taylor, she she started attending Impact uh, Church. Okay, at... tell, they may not know what Impact is. So oh, tell them yeah. how you came to Impact. <laughs> yes, That's so... what you were doing, but. Taylor, <laughs> yeah, no problem. So Taylor, uh, we had been attending another church in Greenville, and I knew at that point, it's like I need to go to church. I need to get back. I need to get back on, on on a good path, and I need to surround myself with really good people. And I knew what I was doing wasn't working, and I pretty much needed help. And so Taylor had been attending uh, Impact Community Church at the YMCA, and had went a couple times. I don't know how she was initially in it, uh, went, but I do know she had went to a few of the, uh, the meetings there, the youth meetings, and she loved it. So she said, Mom, I'm not going to two churches. So her dad was going, he originally was going to impact first. <laughs> so she said, I'm not going to two churches. And that really laid on my heart. And I thought, wow, I needed to step up and be be a good mom and I needed to attend. So my initial start was to go for, for Taylor. So your ex-husband, yes. you now divorced. Yes. Uh, your ex-husband was attending there and Taylor didn't want to go to two different churches. So you started going, you sucked okay. it up and said, okay, I'm going to go. And how was that initially? Was it impactful? Was it hurtful? What what was going on? It there? was a challenge because it really did stretch me. Uh, when I first when I first started attending, obviously I wanted to make sure that it it was okay, you know, with my ex husband. I, I didn't want to cause any trouble, and I, I realized that it wasn't about who was in the congregation after I started going. It was about the reason why I was intended to be there in the first place. So I just kept my eyes. I didn't care about who was in the crowd. I, I didn't, you know, didn't know where he was sitting. Um, Taylor would sit with me one week, sit with him the next week, which was probably very confusing to everybody that was going there at the time. But I just continued to focus on the reason why I was there. And every message, and I'm sure everyone feels this way at some point, but it seemed like every message was meant for me. And um, I really enjoyed every time that I went to church. And it no longer became about seeing the ex-husband there or wondering about what anybody thought of me. It was about going for the right reasons. And so during this time, while you're going for the right reasons, what was God doing in your life? So there was a lot of uh, messaging around forgiveness, and I continue to hear the same messaging over and over again about forgiveness. And when, if you've ever been through a divorce, first of all, I would not recommend it in any way, shape, or form if you can prevent it. But if you've ever been through something like that, 
you know, it's funny, the people that you love the most become those that you despise the most. And so there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of hurt, but the message was clear that in order for me to get any type of forgiveness and that we've all fallen short, that I needed to forgive as well. So uh, it just really put joy in my heart and I became extremely humble and I started uh, seeing things. I started to see everything different, but I, I started to also think about, you know, all the things that Jesus went through was nothing compared to what I went through and that I just needed to let go and let God. Okay. Did you, a lot of times when people go to a church, they don't know anybody, uh, or very few people, they feel inadequate. Did that kind of feeling come about you? Well, in my 30s, it did. But going to impact, in the beginning, because of my personal situation, I felt a little different, I would say. You know, I thought, I saw a lot of families that were together, and I thought, well, my family doesn't look like this. Um, but I'll tell you, what was, what was astonishing was that every time that I would go, I would have countless individuals uh, ask me how I was doing, we're so glad you're back. Um, at one point, Kermit, I missed uh, two times in a row because of work, and they were like, they they were coming up to me and they were saying, "We're so glad you're here. How's everything going?" And so it became more of a family environment. Um, they actually started becoming my family. Good, good. That's that's exciting to hear, especially from somebody that's involved in the ministry. But you want. We want people to be involved in each other's lives. Uh, we like to say sometimes that we are doing life together, and that makes family. And God has described his church as your family, and that's what we want it to be and need it to be. What was one of some of the things that impacted you? People have told me that, that usually when they have a growth spurt in their lives, it's because something happened that drove them to their knees almost and then they began to grow or sometimes it's this little thing that comes into our life and causes us to think wait a minute am I doing this right what's going on here did anything like that happen in your life yeah well definitely going through a divorce and just thinking about the separation period and you know if I could go back in time and if I would have been going to Impact Community Church three years ago, I don't think I would have been divorced. So this has really inspired me to look at things differently and to want to help others. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the goal is to keep families together. And, you know, seeing the, Im the impacts that it, it put on Taylor, on myself, on my family, on his family, uh, you know, you don't want to see other other people go through that. And even in church and, and, and looking at all those families that are going currently and you see the kids and you see their smiling faces and how excited they are to come, you know, you want them to keep that same image when they leave those doors. And so through this process, you were growing in your walk with God and your ex-husband was doing the same thing. He was growing in his walk with God. And Taylor's, I think, is just sitting back there and smiling. <laughs> She's a lot <laughs> happier now, that's for sure. <laughs> but I heard you correctly, I think. If I didn't, correct me. But you said uh, if you had had God in your life, mm -hmm. if you would have church in your life and a family that was supportive in your life, meaning your church family, uh, you don't think you'd ever came to a divorce? No, and it's just like any family. Family doesn't always get along. They don't mm -hmm. always uh, agree. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, definitely having someone to talk to, um, having a good support system, having, having individuals like yourself and your wife that's been married for over 50 years, being able to see those things um, in today's society the divorce rate is so high and it's easy. It's easy to get a divorce. 
You know, there's signs at the roads that say divorce less than $500, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, But being able to be around those that can help you and give you the sound advice when you need it and to support you makes all the difference. You have a friend that's a very good friend that does divorce, not divorce recovery, but uh, addiction. Celebrate recovery. Celebrate recovery. And she's had a lot of influence on your life. Yes. And so during this process that you've been going through, God kind of has whispered to you something that he might want you to do in the future. Yeah, so you got to pay it forward. Uh, So I think the biggest thing is you got to look at those individuals, whether it be, you know, Shannon at Celebrate Recovery, um, you know, all the all the women and men that have been in my life that has helped inspire me. And you got to think, you know, now that I've been through these, um, uh, you know, been through the, the, the peaks and the valleys, I guess you could call it. And I just want to be able to help someone else that may need that uh, because I, I wish that I would have had that same uh, whenever I was going through my trials. So I know it's early in the process, but how would you think that might be start to flesh out in your life what? to start this ministry with women? I think a lot of times people think, well, we'll just, uh, you know, go big or go home. But it's little small steps. You know, uh, it's it's being able to talk to, it might be one one we, one female, and, and that's already happened. You know, it may be going to Starbucks for coffee and just having a conversation. But learning and throughout the, the Bible studies and being around those that, I can, you know, either learn how to be or how not to be and apply it and being my true authentic self, uh, I think means a lot. You know, whenever you can just be who God intended you to be um, and and be able to pay it forward makes a difference. What has come out of your growth with God? What is one of the things that, you know, God teaches us in the Bible to, to tithe our time, our talents, and our resources. And you were telling me a story about how that came about in your life. Would you share that? There's a ton of things that's happened um, over the past year that's been positive. I can tell you the, the, there, you know, to name a few, one, my leadership in my career, I have changed how I lead Mm -hmm. and how I treat people. And, you know, I want to make sure that I'm giving the time needed to those that work with me and for me so that that they can prioritize correctly and um that so that that's one uh two is realize that the money that that i do get on my paycheck that i want to be able to utilize that and and help especially when i think about taylor when she was going to to use uh, the camp that she went to there's another one that's coming up soon Mm-hmm. and how not everyone could maybe afford to go, but how it inspired and changed her life when she got to experience that. So tithing is very important. And I'll tell you, when you do the, when I've done the tithing, I don't miss that money. That money has actually came back. I've actually received more things that's happened in a positive light than what I would have ever imagined. So I think about when I think about tithing, I think, you know, I like to go to the tanning bed. I like to get my hair done. I like to do all these things. But at the end of the day, I also want to ensure that the church is being able to provide what they need to help others. You know, one of the principles in the Bible is the principle of reaping and sowing. Uh, When you plant seeds, when you put things in, when you invest in things, you reap a harvest. If I have a handful of corn and I go out and plant it, I don't get this that handful of corn back. I get rows of, of corn on the cob that's hanging on the, the stalk of that plant, and much more comes back than I put in. And so that's the principle that God has behind uh, tithing. And it's also not just about the money, mm-hmm. but it's about your time. It's about the resources God's given you. You're a very intelligent young lady. You have, uh, you're very, uh, so do you mind me asking you? 
I'm, I'm 45. I'll be 46. I had to think about it for a second. But in my mind, I want to still be in my 20s. Yeah. So if I could go back, <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm happy with where I am. I'd just like to get back to 50. <laughs> <laughs> but, but as a young lady, you have been in the business world for some time. Mm -hmm. And you have been very successful in that business world. But how has coming alongside God and the spiritual growth that's happening in your life, how has that impacted you in the business world? Oh, that's that, it, it's huge. So the, the things that I thought were important or what I would say a 911, um, it, it's caused me to uh, have patience. I see things differently. I think about people more than I ever have. And I really honestly, when I look at someone, I, I think of them as, well, a child of God. You know, what? how, how would Jesus approach this situation, Christina? Um, you know, I want to treat, treat everybody as fair as possible. But I sleep better at night. I, you know, I'm not as stressed. Uh, so, I'm, you know, there's, there's days where you are. But again, I know that I can... I can pray about it and let God help me through it. But more successful now, uh, this has been the best year that I've had, um, even in my career. Thanks. Let me ask you this in closing. Uh, well, I may not close after all, mm -hmm. but let me ask you this question. Everybody that's listening today, there's more than likely somebody listening that's going through a struggle right now where it's a husband or a wife that's going through a struggle and, and maybe needs some help, what advice would you give anybody in our audience today about how to get back on track with God? Yeah, well, don't, uh, don't lead through emotions would be, you know, and, and not everything is, is permanent. And so you've got to really think about uh, how you've got to be able to trust God and how when someone doesn't trust you, how it makes you feel and that he will listen and he will provide. Also, uh, ensure that you're surrounding yourself with others that believe in God and that would want the best for you. And, and I honestly, Carmen, I'll be, you know, transparent. You want to network with those that are not like you, you know, um, and maybe not be partial to you either so that they could kind of help give you some really good advice and really think about the not just the current state of the moment that you're in but think about what the overall goal is and that's what you really need to to do is take a deep breath and again reach out for help if nothing else i would say reach out for help because you know, I think about the church and I think about everyone that's in it. There's so many different different people that's got different walks of life, all different age groups. And somebody is going to be able to help and guide you. Well, when you start to do that, what I'm hearing you say is you've got to make yourself vulnerable. You do. you, you got do. to put yourself out there and let God work and let people work in your lives too. And it's hard sometimes to trust people. It is. Uh, even in church, we sometimes have difficulty with others in the, in the body of Christ. And, and so how do you get over that and put yourself out there to start doing some of this? I think you gotta trust, you have to, first and foremost, you gotta trust your pastor. You know, you, I truly believe that Dave and Amy has not only my best interest at heart, but everybody's best interest at heart, okay? And if they don't know the answer, nine times out of 10, they're gonna put you in touch with someone who they feel like will be able to help you because they don't know all the answers either, okay? So that's what I would say is, is you know, go in, in confidence and say, you know, I need, I need to speak to you. Um, can you be able to help? And, and I'll tell you, it was interesting, but I had so many text messages from from those at church that I hadn't, I didn't even know who they were, that would just send me a message and they would say, how's your week? You know, do you need anything? And I really believe that I could have said, can you call me? Um, and they would have picked up a phone. So it wasn't just a text message. Yeah. 
there was a couple of things that happened to you along the way. One, uh, our pastor's wife, Amy Carroll, came to you one day and said, it's time for you to start doing something. Yeah, she she wanted me to, to do greeting, being a part of the greeting team. And uh, of course, I'm not going to tell her no, because then I would uh, not be able, I would be saying I couldn't do something. But I took it as a good challenge because what else was I going to do with my time? Um, but I enjoyed greeting and, you know, I enjoyed seeing everyone walk in the door, uh, smiling faces. It helped me get over the fear of meeting people because when, you know, that's the biggest thing going through the divorce was I felt ashamed. I felt less than it, you know, I took it hurt my pride. Um, you know, I just felt like I failed. And so you become almost like a little hermit. You know, you don't want to talk to anybody. You know, you just got to go through it. you say Kermit or hermit? I said hermit, but I could have been a Kermit. I don't know. But the the point is, is greeting helped me uh, get out of that, get out of my box, Kermit. It helped me get out of my box. And then the next thing you know, I'm coming every Sunday greeting, even when I'm not scheduled. I'm just showing up because I enjoyed it so much. Uh, and, and I just love the all different types of uh, people that go there. And, and uh, you know, they're excited to see me. I'm excited to see them. Our church started uh, small groups in the church. And you weren't involved in small groups. And something happened. What happened and what did you do? I was approached uh, from from a lady of the church who said, you know, why don't you join our Bible study? And I thought, wow, here's, in my, I'll be honest, in my mind, I'm like, how am I going to get all this stuff done? But again, you know, I thought, oh, I, you know, I've got to show up. That's that's a 99.9% .9 of it, just showing up. And I thought, all this homework I'm going to have to do. But you know what I really enjoyed? It was just, again, it was about being a part of a, a group of women that, I could learn from, I learned uh, how each one of them prays differently. Mm -hmm. um, I learned how, you know, each one of them, uh, how they do their homework or how they do their their uh, their reading of the Bible in the morning. Some will read them in the morning, some read them at night. Um, so I just, I learned from it. Well, tell me about uh, how you see things now. You're growing spiritually. You're in a church that loves you that cares for you, that you love. What do you see in your future as you go through this process? Even more growth coming? What's what's going on with you, and why do you like your church so much? Well, definitely, as far as growth, I think about all the locks that, that uh, Dave has on there for the, the mission about unlocking lives. I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm excited to be a part of that. Um, definitely would, would love to be able to pay it forward and, and help anyone be able to, to give their life to God and not be stressed and know where they're going. And, you know, you enjoy life so much more when you know where you're going mm -hmm. and you know what your purpose is. So um, I'd say for me, next steps is, is to continue to engage, continue to be a part of it, not just on Sundays. And I can't stress that enough to, to everyone uh, on the call is you get what you put into it. It's like anything else that you've got to, you have to build your relationship with God and, and you will continue to grow. Thanks, Christina. That's, that's an important message. You know, it all starts when you give your life to Jesus Christ. We say that phrase a lot, give your life, but that means he's in charge, completely in charge of your life when you turn your life over to him. And you can't start to grow in him till you make that first step, giving your life to Christ and starting with him, letting him guide your life, letting him direct your life. My favorite verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This podcast came about because of the desire that God put in my heart to see people grow in their spiritual walk because it's a whole different world when you give your life to Christ and start to grow in him. In other words, you, when I say grow in him, I'm talking about you start to look like him because 
the word Christian, when it was first introduced in the Bible, meant little Christ. Hmm. And Christ wants us to look like him, to be like him. And so he wants us to grow. And we never, ever will stop growing in him until we reach heaven. Then we'll be perfect. Not that I'm not now, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> but it's been great to have Christina here with us today and talk to us and share some insights into her life and what God is doing there. Maybe you've got some insights you need to share also. Contact me. It's Kermit Morris. No, it's not. It is Kermit Morris, but that's not my email address. <laughs> my email address is outoftheboxkermit at gmail.com. Out of the box, Kermit at gmail.com. Send me a, an email and tell me about yourself and tell me that you would like to meet or you'd like to sometimes talk about certain things on Out of the Box with Kermit Morris. He does listen and he does read every email. So definitely send that email. Thanks, Christina. Join us next week. We're going to start a long series next week. But we're going to interrupt those series about every third one with another interview of somebody and what they're going through. Because I think we learn more from other people, what God's doing in their life. So stay with us. Stick around. Give us an e send us an email. And join us next week as we begin Boot Camp for Christians. And we'll see you next week on Out of the Box with Kermit Morris.